So thank you guys, everybody, for uh, the birthday wishes and for joining us uh, today. Really, really appreciate it. It's a crazy journey that two years ago, um, this idea randomly happened and we managed to community around it. So really thank you for all the support. Um, we figured since this is virtual, probably most of us, most of you know who we are, but we just wanted to just do a quick intro uh, for those of you that don't know who we are. Um, so my name is uh, Ricky, and I am um, I actually started this uh, two years ago, and I've later been joined by Ines and Will, and I think uh, you guys should introduce yourself. Um, uh, Ines, I don't know if you want to go first. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I am Ines Garcia here supporting the Data Tribe. I'm a Salesforce MVP and an Agile coach. Um, and yeah, I've been, been having the time of my life with Einstein Analytics recently. Uh, Ricky knows more about it. But yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, hi. Uh, for those who don't know me, I, I'm Will, uh, Will Teller, and I am uh, basically a Salesforce end, end user, um, and I just love everything around data and data analytics, and um, I just want to say a big thank you really for, to everyone for your support, but most of all for Ricky for starting this, uh, starting this community. It's been enormous fun to be part of, um, and really look, you know, really love giving back to the community. Thank you guys and uh, thanks for helping organize this today. You guys, it wasn't possible. Let's get on to what's happening tonight. Um, we have a we have a brand new format uh, where we have challenged um, some of the UK analytics champions um, to take a, you know to grab a data set. Um, we told them to you know to explore it, to kick it around use their you know use their skills and experience to think about ways of building some you know building some fun stuff building some quirky stuff use some of the features on the platform and really give an opportunity for them not just for them to show off their ea superpowers but hopefully in doing so it will bring some inspiration to you guys um and and you know and so it brings some inspiration for you guys and bring some hints and tips and some ideas that perhaps you can incorporate um, we have given them uh, a, a, sh a short slot uh, for them to talk through, uh, and so not just uh, present what they've built, but talk through what they talk through what they've built, talk through the ideas they've had. Um, you know, you know, give us an give us an idea of of what they found when when building it. Um, you know, and just just give you that uh, give you some sort of technical insight and really hopefully you will find you know I'm sure you will find something very interesting um, very interesting to, to talk about um, and they will then be given a chance to answer any uh, specific questions uh, that you might have and then at the end of the day um, it's up to you guys watching to decide on a winner and it might just be worth adding that the data set that we're looking at is Marvel superheroes. Um, so hence the superhero slide or like image. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for that. So to introduce you to your to your willing victims, I mean um, participants tonight, we have the um, you know, we have Steve Marcel who works for uh, Cloud Jungle. Um, uh, we have uh, second up will be Mr. Matt Byrne, who is uh, has not just spoken and presented before, but Matt works for Financial Force um, and is their analytics champion. And we have um, maybe a bit of a newcomer into the space, Mr. James Wignall, um, who will be giving us uh, some fantastic insights. So um, these are your three uh, gladiators tonight who will be um, out there presenting and sparring for your vote. Great. Let me know when you can uh, see the screen. We can see the screen, Steve. There we go. Great. Well, I'd just like to sort of start off by um by by thanking um everybody for uh, for being here tonight, and especially the organisers for inviting me. It's a prestigious audience that we've got here, so uh, I am I am honoured. Um, and um, just just have a look, a look at this quote from uh, from Albert himself. Um, I just stumbled across it last night when uh, I was uh, just trying to sort of cram some uh, images into my my presentation. 
So uh, it, uh, it was quite uh, quite compelling. The important thing is not to stop questioning curiosity. Um, this, sorry, the important thing is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. And uh, as we're exploring some of these data sets, it seems to be quite pertinent. So brace your eyeballs um, for, these, for this lovely colour scheme. Um, you'll be pleased to know that this is all going to be presented from Einstein Analytics. Um, and um, so just uh, a little bit about me, first of all. So I'm the CEO at uh, Cloud Jungle. We're Salesforce partners. Um, we are uh, based in the northwest of England. I've got a team of six. We've only been going for two years. We're really, really busy. Um, and the whole team have been working fantastically from home. In fact, probably more productive than being in the office where we have far too much fun. Um, so yes, I am an analytics champion. I am not a data scientist. I am not a coder. In fact, our business, we, um, we've got a no code um, a philosophy uh, in the business. So everything we do is, is clicks, not code. Um, and also, I've never really been into the superhero thing, unfortunately. Um, I know many of you may be, but so when I saw the, uh, the invite, I thought superheroes, I'm not going to get involved with that. And then I thought, well, hang on a minute. That's the reason why I should get involved, because I know nothing about it. And let's have a look at these data sets and, uh, and see what we can make of it. So, um, a little bit about this uh, session, then I'll explain the side a little bit more. So, so basically, um, because we're no code, I wanted to sort of demonstrate some stuff which you can just do um, declaratively with uh, with analytics. So everything is point and click. Um, there's going to be it can involve you guys in it as well. Um, so, and you're going to get the opportunity to build your own superhero. Um, we can talk about how we worked with this with these data sets and um, we structured unstructured data and how we did that. Um, we're actually going to run an Einstein discovery story and deploy the model into Salesforce, and then we can give Einstein a makeover and look at some of the hints and tips, hopefully to make him super powerful. Um, and obviously, you can enjoy our, our amazing color schemes. And um, um, just obviously looking at this slide here, one of the uh, one of the things is that when you start learning uh, analytics and all the widgets, etc., it's just go big on everything, just go crazy because it helps you understand what all the buttons down the side do. You know, what your border radius is and and uh, all your text background colors and this that, and the other. So it's a it's a really good thing to do. So a little bit more about this slide. Um, so at the top left, there's a QR code, and that's actually to open up um, a Google form um, for which you can create your superhero hero. And we've got a little integration going into Salesforce. Um, so um, and then that's going to be pulled into analytics so we can see how everybody's done on the dashboard. So anytime, feel free to fire up that form and start um, start filling filling that out. Um, you may want to wait a little bit and see some insights behind the data before you do that, or you may want to go for it now. It's up to you. Um, and then down the left hand side. So these are the six um, sides effectively that I'm going to be presenting. OK, um, and it's effectively buttons linking to each page so we can we can jump around the uh, the, the presentation as uh, as we as we see. We're going to end up on a dashboard here and you can see I've created my Einstein superhero um, and uh, and the score I've got there. And we should see this populate as you um, as you uh, do your create your superheroes. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the idea. Oh, the bottom bit, the bar, right? All the pubs are shut, but we've got a feature bar and so. So on each page, I'm going to explain the, the, the parts of analytics I used to um, at that stage of my journey through through this data set. So so basically, on setting up this initial page, it was like right, I need to set my page hyperlinks up, and I've got text widgets. I've got a little image widget here, which was posted on Twitter earlier today. So I'll bang that in. Um, um, widget stylings. We've got nice green thick borders with the curvy bits on them. Um, and um, for example, all these buttons here are in a container, so I can move them all around very quickly rather than one at a time. So those are the sorts of features, it's all standard point and click stuff um, that you find in analytics. So I'm going to click on the next page. So go 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 into the data sets. So as we said before, I, maybe I've got it slightly wrong, but the the link I had for, for there was about seven different data sets on that link, and oh my god. Um, I didn't realize there's about 37,000 superheroes. Uh, again, I knew nothing about them. And so what I did is, is, is basically um, got the CSVs and ported into analytics and start having a dig around, see what sort of data we could uh, we could find. And some of them had ID, some of them had a load of missing data. And so, that, so it's at this point I was thinking, this is like real life in terms of getting a customer, giving you a whole lot of data and trying to sort things out. So, um, so what I did, I ended up coming up with two data sets Okay, and one one on the left here was a bit like um, it was a bit like top trumps really. So they had scores on intelligence, speed, durability, combat, strength, power, which gave you a total superpower um, uh, score. 
Okay, and then there was another data set um, where, and they very, and and basically there they were looking at okay, what magazine was it published in? Are they a good goodie or a baddie or indifferent? What breed they were? What sex? Um, male, female, other? Um, height was an interesting one. You can have negative height superheroes and negative weight superheroes apparently. Um, if you've got different color eyes, obviously, and so we've uh, we represented that here, um, and then sort of their hair color. So, so, so the reason for like sort of um, uh, thinking here was was I was thinking about maybe was there any correlation between these two data sets? So, does hair color, for instance, influence total super product score? Okay, so that that's what I was started to get thinking about. So, just going back to the feature bar here. Um, so lens exploration, okay, so these are just standard um, uh, tables um, brought in onto the, onto the dashboard um, um, for my queries. And then, um, so I'll just give you a bit of a clue what might come later. So intelligence, so Einstein's a very intelligent guy, isn't he? So, so if we rank um, uh, the uh, superheroes by intelligence, um, we can see that some guys called 113, so super intelligent. And then over here, this is their total power score. And you see actually, even if they're like super intelligent, they're not always super powerful. There's some quite low scores there. So red is red is hot, blue is low, et cetera, and some bits in the middle. So um, so there is, uh, we'll see if there's any correlations there um, in the future. And then, um, and over here, I've used conditional formatting here, but with um, a, a dimension rather than a measure to, to sort of say, yeah, if it's blue, we're going to have it kind of blue. So it's just a lot of the little conditional formatting feature that you can use on, uh, on a standard data table. So nothing too um, tricky there. Okay, let's talk about the data prep. So we've got these two data sets um, and I want to merge them together. So how are we going to do that? Well, um, I used a recipe and um, so I'm just going to click on this and hopefully it'll open up the actual uh, recipe that um, that we created. Um, and there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, steps here in terms of where we sort of merge the data around. But but to start with, we, we, we brought two data sets together and they um, we found that there was a high correlation on the superhero name. I think each one had about 650 superheroes in. Um, and I think we ended up with, uh, here we've got like 611 rows of, uh, of data, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, and so um, so using the, the name as a key, then we could bring one data set and get those sort of metrics of like speed and combat, et cetera, alongside things like uh, uh, eye color, yeah, and hair and what breed they were, et cetera. Now, when you look at eye color here, um, so if we look at this column that's highlighted, there was there was all sorts. Um, and if we click on here, we can see a distribution of all the different eye colors. There was loads. But I'm asking you to fill out a form, remember, so we can play this play along at home. Um, and so what we did is we bucketed um, the the top ones. So if it was uh, blue, it was blue. Um, but then if it was purple, it goes into the uh, into the other bucket because there were so many different colors. So, so this is a way that we've sort of prepared the data to uh, prep it up. It also quite worked quite nicely for a few of the blanks that we had to, to fill those in. They went into, into other. Okay, we did similar things with hair color um, and a few of the other parameters as well. Um, we also managed to filter out um, some, uh, s some records where the essential data was missing. So we, we've managed to filter those ones out. And, and also when we go through this, we could, it sort of highlighted where there was a few duplicates in the, uh, in the data to get rid of those as well. So recipes was really good for the, uh, for the data prep uh, section there. Okay, so let's go back to the feature bar. So what do we do? We use the augment feature in the recipes to join the data sets. Um, we could highlight duplicate and or missing data and fil filter that out. And then we use buckets to clean um, small group groups of items in, into other. Um, it was also, um, I think it was for hair color as well. We had like some browns with a capital B and some browns with a lowercase B. And so it's being able to tidy up all that data, which we did in our recipe. Steve, you're halfway. Great. Right, then, didn't realize it's going to be a bit like a... Um, <laughs> Good timing is 15 minutes. Hang, is it? Right, brilliant. Okay, so um, so then um, so then our challenge was, remember the QR codes here from do the form, is there a correlation between um, our selected variables and the power score? And so in terms of outcome, we want to maximize total super power score. And the inputs that we're going to have are intelligence, height, weight, publisher, alignment, sex, hair, and eyes, et cetera. So these are the, the things on your form that hopefully you're, you're filling out. If you can't get the QR code, there's a shortcut here, bit.ly forward slash London tribe. 
Okay, and so thinking about how we built our story is we use the Einstein discovery story wizard. And the key thing is, is to find your outcome variable. So total superpower score and, and what variables you're going to input. So what, what you're going to see that influences those scores. So that led us to our Einstein discovery story. Okay, so, um, so once we define those um, variables and run the wizard, and then we can see that the major influence on the total superpower score was intelligence. Um, and um, the more intelligent um, the, the superhero, then the, the greater the, um, the, the score. Um, until you got down to about 15 to 40 in terms of intelligence score, and then there was no statistical significance, it's, it's gray. This blue bar means it's significant, but in a bad way. So, so in one to 14, scored really lowly, it had a, a negative weight um, weighting on it on the total superpower score. I really like looking at the why it happens waterfall chart here in terms of you can see all the major components that helped um, intelligence go along the way by like breed is other, for example, a bit of a hint for later. But then how good was this model? So um, so we can go in here to look at the and evaluate it. And and what we, what we've done is we've got our um, uh, our actual scores. So this data set had actual total scores, but we run the, run the data set, predict what the, what the model would think they would be. So there's a strong correlation between um, the Einstein predicting the total scores of the superhero. So this tells me that maybe it's the um, it's the designer himself thinking that if I want a big, strong superhero, like one of the, the most powerful ones, he's got a certain persona in mind. Okay, so. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. And then you can get really into the detail and look at the, uh, um, the this R squared score here at 0.7. Tell us, it tells us it's a it's a strong correlation. It is a, a good data set to to work with. Okay, so what does that look like in Salesforce? So we created a superhero object with um, uh, all of those uh, characteristics, and I, and I've created one at, uh, at random here, um, uh, Einstein tribal warrior that we saw before. And um, and then when we save that, Einstein, hopefully if it saves anytime soon and comes up on the screen, which it's not going to do because it's live. So go to recently viewed. Try again. Brilliant. Okay. So um so here, here's our record here. And Einstein's giving us some predictions about how to make him more intelligent. Or more, sorry, the total super um, score superpower score higher. So um, it's good that he's in the 76 to 88 range, um, but um, and it's DC Comics and Human, but actually changing breed to other. Where's breed gone? It is here. And sex to female. And height to 199 to well, above 199, basically. So we're giving like a 250 height. And let's save that and see how we're doing. Now, okay, so now our score's gone up to 472. I think it started off at 225, and there's still loads of improvements to do. So what this is doing is constantly looking at combinations of these variables to Im improve the score. So I'll have, a, I'll have a, 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 another go here to improve this by going to negative weight, really, or Three to minutes. a higher weight here. Okay, um, in fact, let's just, since we're short on time, we'll leave, we'll leave this and we'll go back to our demo. And we'll look at the dashboard. So refresh. Has anybody been doing any of their superpower superpower scores? We should see them coming through. Yes, we have. Fantastic. Okay. So um, so what we're using here is the new um, Salesforce Direct um, query. So this is actually querying Salesforce Live, and this is why we didn't have to wait for data replication to come through. So um, this is a, a real nice, a real nice feature, and we can see whoever Super Papa is five two two. Um, they've done a, a really good job with their, uh, their score. In fact, let's see who Super Papa is because I can actually thought I'd done this previously. It didn't save. I'm going to change this, and we're going to put the creator uh, in here as a field. Two minutes. Uh, update that. And it's Christos. And James is doing really well on 437 as well. So um, we will perhaps come back to this in a second to see if there's any updates on the score. Um, so features used also a dynamic 
a reference line. So previously here, this is looking at the average of all of our superheroes, okay? And um, previously, we would have used Sackle to do it. But with the new Spring Update, we can um, we can run a, a compare table, do a calculation, and then display that um, in the reference line. So you look at the reference line widget um, on the dashboard, and you can populate that. So that's a really good example of how the platform's uh, helping the guys like me who don't do that much code out. Okay, um, um, we've uh, said uh, direct. We also did a data flow to, to to build to bring this core data into Salesforce as well. So, uh, awful lot of features going on there, and um, I think we're just going to finish on this to thank everybody um, for coming along. And perhaps we should go back and look at the previous winner in a minute. But the whole point is we used all these different features, everything from basic widgets through to recipes through to some of the more cool stuff like um, uh, referencing interactions on uh, on on reference lines and uh, the Salesforce Direct feature and had a lot of fun doing it as well. And let's make sure that this is bang up to date to find out who the winner is. Is any going to be, going to be Christos? Let's find out. I think we're going to have to... Oh, we didn't save that, but it super happy. was Christos. So I think Christos is our winner today. And thank you very much. Great stuff. Thank you. Steve. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> and well done, Christos, uh, as well. Um, nicely done, Steve. Well inside the time there. Um, okay. Uh, so has anyone uh, got, any, got any questions? Um, we have we've had a few comments uh, throughout your presentation, Steve. Um, uh, so yeah, so first one from Abhishek was yeah, just love the domain, love the custom domain name that you used. Lightningforce dot com, and um, yeah, and uh, and some praise for the yeah, you know, you've done amazing considering all this has done been been done through clicks and zero code. Uh, amazing work very very cool so thank you very thank thank you very much for that abhishek um uh we've had some comments some, some very supportive comments thank you santani really well presented um but no question so has anyone does anyone want to come off mute and ask steve uh, any questions A question so for the discovery part for the story so aside of the correlation which other things would you look at to feel comfortable about the model okay good question so um so yeah we went through a sort of few evaluations on on this obviously to make sure that uh, everything was correlating correctly um and i think one of the things that uh, what sort of highlighted here was these, these horrible blobs down the bottom um, and this is where um, the data set was scoring every everybody for one, you know, so so basically they, they scored five overall and our predictive model was scoring them very low, but you know, in the 40s and 50s, etc. So I would probably um, actually eliminate those from the from the model and then just try to see what that did to the uh, to the prediction line. But um, but obviously intelligence was a, was a score which which clearly was going to be uh, aligned to the total score because it was the, one of the six parameters that added up to the total score. However, there was plenty of superheroes with a low intelligence score as well. So there is um, there's something in there in the mindset of the uh, of the of the cartoonists um, that you know when they want a superhero to have certain features, they might give them red yeah. hair and make them tall, or they if they're going to be blonde, they're going to be of negative weight, for example. So and I think that sort of pans out in the in the model metrics. Does that answer your question or not? Yeah, yeah, kind of. But um, in real life, if you're looking at another data set, the side of this graph, which of the things would you be looking at just to feel comfy that um, what you're displaying is the right model? Or would you what what would be the things that will um, highlight that you need another iteration, maybe? Uh, yeah, just um, running through it with the um, with the obviously the users, the people that know the business really well. Um, and actually, I don't know super, superheroes at all. So for those superior geeks out there you might be able to help me out in terms of discussing how we you know, what, what we um found with the data um and i think um i think sometimes we try and perhaps get to expect too much from, from from the discovery stories and in effect 
it shouldn't really tell us anything too incredibly amazing, but it's a tool really to help the end user in their decision making with the customer. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a simple guidance thing to do. Um, you know, if you're if you're doing you know, promotions of a, of a of a of warm wear, for example, you know, nice not nice and um, thick coats, you know, they're not going to sell very well in Florida, but they're going to sell pretty well in Alaska. So there's that sort of stuff you're going to you're going to know already. Um, but it's about getting those combinations of insights, the fact that, you know, um, um, you know, it's, it's a certain promotion or something like that, which goes well to increase your sales. It's those it's, it's, it's those little variables um, brought together, which is, uh, is the most insightful. And it's be worth just discussing that with the um, you know, with the with the with the business like why is it always the big guys have red eyes you know it could be, it could be the outcome from this um and there'd be might be a perfect reason for it but i wouldn't know so don't any about superiors <laughs> thanks steve thanks steve um we had a couple of questions in on the chat first one uh from matt was how much did you need to iterate to get a good model um very little very very little like twice um but the fact the first model was i pretty much nailed it first time in terms of that model that's presented but it was the, the challenge really was before that it was um we had like seven uh, data sets and it's like just trying to work out how to combine them and um you know and and, and actually what do i want to, what story do i want to tell you know and uh, and it was only when i found like we could bring together a nice good set of data with some different types of variables that is like right yeah that's a story so really it just speak it, it was more of um playing with the data sets in the first place to to actually filter out and get some um complete complete data to play with that was the challenge. and when i found that it was kind of just jumped out at me that look we got these these crazy variables that you wouldn't necessarily associate with total power scores but let's go and see and and um, um and actually even if you take intelligence out of, of that so if you if you if you don't make intelligence a variable there's still a, a quite a good correlation it's not quite as strong um because it's not one of the schools that's going in but um but, it, the, but there still is a correlation i mean like the, the height thing was like really important in that scenario and then and then height and being blonde for, and a good guy <laughs> so so there was uh, it was i mean it was really interesting today Anymore? You're, you're muted, Will. Okay, we got another one from Gad. Do you want to unmute yourself? I can read it for you otherwise. Okay, right. So, how is the security working on the direct Salesforce connection? No security predicate required, I presume? Good question. Let me ask Ricky. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I would assume it would follow the Salesforce um, security settings. I think you probably. Yeah, good question. Uh, it should follow the Salesforce. Just... Yeah. I think um, there's some settings in there that you can adjust. I think you do that in your default analytics settings i'm not i, I couldn't tell you okay. cool okay um steve thank you very much um excellent presentation i think everyone enjoyed getting involved involved with that one uh, everything all good and you can hear me yep cool um, well. yeah, fine to get started yeah um i will say that it was um i did submit my my superhero that was very cool um <laughs> I didn't end up in the top 10 list, but based on what you've shown, presumably I need a sex change <laughs> um, to increase that score. Um, so I'm also doing mine in uh, uh, all in analytics as well. And one thing I wanted to show you actually is that uh, there is a learn function, which I don't think people uh, make the most of, which allows you to embed certain items. So I did, I did want to do a, like an intro video. This isn't the, uh, the, it doesn't say Einstein analytics at the end, event, end, unfortunately, but I do think that's pretty cool functionality that people don't make the most of. And you can still move around your dashboard and do other things while listening to some awesome music embedded in the dashboard. Okay, pretty cool.
Can people hear the music? Are they feeling inspired? <laughs> cool. Uh, right. There we go. Um, so this was the challenge. There was seven data sets, and I uh, actually have I got six, and I wanted to use them all. Um, so what I what we had here is we had a list of characters. We got the name of the character and their ID. Uh, we've also got the name and their powers as well. So whether they have different powers. We've also then got um, whether on what the stats are. So this is where Steve was showing their combat, their intelligence, and their alignment for each character. Underneath, we have some more information around their gender, their eye color, their weight, their height. We've got a, a list as well related to comics. So we've got a list of the comics and the descriptions for the comics as well for each of those. In addition to another table, a sixth table, which tells us the comic ID, which is also down here, and the characters that are in that comic as well. Now, I am a, a superhero fan. I like them all. Um, so one thing I wanted to know is which superhero had the most powers. So with the table that came through the superhero powers, I just want to show you um, what we've got. So in this table, for each um, attribute for a user, for a, not a user, for a um, superhero, we get whether or not they have an ability. So 3D man doesn't have accelerated healing. He doesn't have adaption. Um, the problem with this is that I need to add in each one of these powers. And there's loads of them, absolutely loads of them. Can't remember how many. Um, but there is a lot of powers, and I don't want to go through each one. I want to know who has the most powers. And in order, this data set will allow me to filter for individual people. I can look for the people that have uh, accelerated healing. These are all the people that have it. But I want to see um, how many powers uh, Angel has, for instance. So to do this, um, this is could be quite advanced, but we are a data tribe. Um, I transposed the data set. So to do this, I went over into the data manager and I brought in all of my different data sets. I brought in the comics. I had a look at the people that were on the, in the comics and I had a look at um, who else was in the comics. I brought in the character details and I brought in the, um, the superheroes power matrix. So I brought that in after it was uploaded as a CSV. I then went ahead and did some um, changes in the data flow. And these are just some of the changes I've made um, based on all the superpowers. And I have done this in Excel and then uh, re-uploaded it because as you can see, this is going on longer than quarantine. <laughs> um, but the <laughs> I will get there. Love this UI. <laughs> Um, when I get to the bottom of this list, I'll show you some examples of what I'm doing in order to transpose this data set. And this is hopefully, goodness gracious, going to be something that you'll be able to use elsewhere somehow as well. Let's, oh, there we go. Right. So over here, I've got that data set with all the powers and I'm filtering for one particular power, precognition. So now once I've filtered it, I'm going to have fewer records. I'm only going to have the names of the superheroes that have pre-recognition. Um, I can then go ahead and add in some extra fields with a compute expression. I'm big, being, creating a column called power, called pre-cognition. -co, pre, uh, and I'm going to have a column in my data, in my source called character name, which is just the name of the character. This means that the output is going to be a single column for the power name, which we're setting in there, and a single column for the character names. After I've done this for each power, I'm going to combine them all together so that I have a single data set with the names of the characters and a power. So there's a line, a record for every single character for every power as well. I later on bring in all the other attributes as well so that I can uh, get the details for those characters. But what this means is that with the output, I have more records because I've transposed, I've turned it around. So instead of columns, there's now rows. And instead of 600 records, I've got 6,000. Um, but it does mean now I have, if I go to character name, I can see straight away that 3D man has four powers. Okay. So I can answer my question of who has the most powers. And I've got Spectre in here as the user with most powers. Now, if I wanted to as well, I can have a look at what those powers are because I have a new uh, dimension called power. Uh, and if I just unsort this, uh, we'll be able to see uh, some of the details. 
I can see for 3D Man, they have these powers because I've turned it around the other way. I no longer have uh, columns for every single one of those um, powers, but instead I can come in and go, right, find me some characters that have multiple powers without having to <laughs> build out some stuff. Cool. Um, if you so you might have some use cases where you might want to do trans, uh, transposing um, of data like that. But that gave me some information. I then brought in all of the extra data that I wanted as well around the hair color and the race and the gender and their stats as well um, for the combat and durability. So I combined it all into a single um, data set. Um, going across, we can have a look at what I did with this. So here I have my uh, look at the data that I've pulled together. So up here I have a selector so I can choose between different characters. I'm currently looking at Iron Man. I can see that Iron Man has 21 different powers and an attribute score of 492 out of 600, and it gives him a star rating as well. We get the attributes underneath as stars, but also as this beautiful looking, oh, what's the name of this chart? It's escaped me. Um, giving me a breakdown of their powers and where they're strongest. So Tony Stark, Iron Man, has very high intelligence, as I can see from this chart. You can also see all of the um, powers that he has broken down. A little bit of this is cheating, I think, because he's wearing a suit. Um, but I did ch choose this visualization because it told me right in the middle that they have 21 powers. Um, underneath, I've uh, taken Tony's name and I've filtered the comics to tell me which comics is Tony in, because one of the data sets had that information. And uh, not only that, um, I then had a look and built a, a SACL query, went a bit further than clicks um than uh, steve and it tells me now uh, based on the comics all of the comics that iron man in was in which comics who else was in those comics so i can see that wolverine was in 400 of the iron man comics um that iron man was also in which may surprise you from the films because um wolverine wasn't in any of the avengers films but he is in the comics um i can change this from top 10 to top 20 to change the limit as well now, this is where we get a bit um, clever, because when you have um, dashboards, you can add links to them. And those links can navigate to other dashboards. They can navigate to um, other pages within a dashboard, and they can navigate to URLs. And those URLs can be clever. So what I've done here is I've got a button here, because these are my list of comics. But you know what? I want to read those comics. So I press I'll this button. Off one minute. That's fine. Press that button. It's going to go off and it's going to find me all those comics um, that relate to Iron Man from the Marvel website. So it's a dynamic link. I've also done the same up here to show me information about Iron Man on the Marvel wiki to give me details there. And because I wanted to, because I'm interested in this, I created another link to find me all of the results for Iron Man from IMDb as well. Now, if I go to the summary view, this is just looking at one user. I can go in and filter by all the different elements I've got in there. Uh, and I can see what is the most popular power out of my uh, 333 Marvel characters, because I filtered by Marvel, 199 have super strength. And I can see which of the characters are the strongest with the highest score uh, in the Marvel Universe here. Now, Stardust, I don't know who Stardust is. So uh, if I go over to the Character Explorer, I can have a look at Stardust, um, and it's going to update the dashboard to show me who they are. Now, you'll also notice that the image is updated. Um, when in the data flow, I added a URL to generate the uh, image for each user and uploaded those as images into Einstein, which finds the right one and puts them into this chart for me. So if I'm switching between the uh, different um, characters, it's going to find an image of that character for me. Um, I hope that that wasn't cheating. Uh, and I can still, from Thanos, go and read the comics that Thanos is in because it's going to dynamically update the URLs that I'm linking to. Going back to the summary, just a bit more use, uh, interesting information. I wanted to see a breakdown of different um, attributes. So I wanted to see gender broken down by alignment. And you can see that 82% of uh, women are good and only 55% of men are bad. Um, I'm sure some people will agree with some of that. <laughs> um, but I can also go in and start to break it down by the different elements as well. There's lots of different values in there 
But the one I'm interested in is the powers, because I want to see all those different powers. And I can see that uh, if I want to look for the worst ones, I can see that people with anti-gravity are always bad. Um, but there's only particularly one different character with that uh, called Kang. And I don't know who Kang Love is. So, oh, uh, I'm, I'm on Fs. Oh. Five minutes, Matt, sorry. Oh, that's fine. Uh, we've got Kang. So let's have a look at the details of Kang back on our Character Explorer to learn a bit more about Kang. Um, I can see, if I unselect anti-gravity, that uh, Kang has nine powers. He's pretty strong. I can see the characters and I can see who Kang is interacting with the most. He's having a lot of impact with the Avengers, with Thor, uh, with Captain America. So he's all within that DC universe and you get an idea of, of where he is appearing. Uh, we can also go ahead and break this down, uh, not just by um, uh, alignment as well, um, but I can also break it down by gender to get a bit of interest there uh, to see where, where the powers are um, breaking down based on gender to give a little bit of uh, information into that. Uh, some of this I have used um, Einstein lens functionality to allow it to uh, put in a color format and also to rank these based on the scoring. And if I wanted to see in the Marvel universe which uh, characters have the most powers, I can just filter these columns and I can see Captain Marvel has 34 powers, uh, followed by Galactus and Thanos uh, in there as well. Um, with a few minutes left, I just want to show some people that might be interested about the URLs, and that's using the um, advanced editor for any of these items, clicking on those, going to the advanced editor and updating the URL to have a binding which I'm taking directly from the list of characters that I've got in there, getting my result and going ahead and finding the character name and it puts that directly in there. It does some pretty cool stuff for this advanced editor, makes everything much easier so you don't actually need to do code. You can do it all by clicking, which um, yeah, I quite enjoy. Uh, hopefully you found that interesting. Uh, that's the end of my demo. Right, fantastic. Fantastic, Matt, thank you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and you finished a good two and a half minutes inside the time as well, which is excellent. Um, you're also just reading through some of the comment, comments. Um, certainly a, a nice slide to start with was the first one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't um, think people use those well, videos enough, you know, put them in different places. I think it's you know pretty a pretty cool uh, piece of functionality, and this one's such an autoplay as well. I think, but yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome. Um, we had a question from uh, Prabat. I said, "How did you pull off the Sankey diagram?" Uh, oh, okay. Um, if I go over to the Sankey diagram, Sankey diagrams are built by two tables. Um, I had uh, we've got a table that's got a list of the um characters um in there and i took a list of the comics that our comic book character is in iron man so i filtered another table over here by the list of comics quite a, a, a large filter as you can expect and that gave me a list of all of the different people that were in those comics um i filtered out iron man out of that list um and then i did do some i did do some sackle here um but i added in an extra column, which I think I can show you. You can see the filter that gets created. Uh, an extra column just called Iron Man. And the name of that column changes depending on the user I pick. And that's all you need for a Sankey. You need one, two columns and a number. Um, and that's what I've done. Yeah, this one, this one was the only place that I used Sackle. Everything else um, was done with normal charts um with the occasional uh, advanced editor that like i showed for the url fantastic, fantastic. i've got quite advanced here with some of this stuff but we are a data tribe team aren't we exactly <laughs> um yeah a first-hand experience of your um of your advanced work matt um, i love, love a sankey as well i think it's such an underused chart but it shows like it got it gives you a percentage breakdown 
Um, people tend to stick to the bars and pies and the rest of mm. it, but I love a chance to use some of these advanced ones. And those of you that know me will know that I also absolutely love a tree map. Love a tree map. And I always yeah. think it looks nothing like a tree. <laughs> uh, fantastic. Um... So yeah, there are lots of uh, lots of very uh, complimentary comments. There, yeah, that was kind of soup. And we got a, we got a Marvel fan in there telling us about why Wolverine wasn't in any of the Avengers films. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we also have uh, a distinct lack of poetry. Uh, oh, which, uh, which uh, I know exactly where that comes from. Um, Does anyone on my LinkedIn will know why people are <laughs> expecting poetry now. <laughs> um, maybe we'll share that one a bit later <laughs> but yes no very very, very com co uh, yeah very complimentary comments coming in here you know very you know you know the word super cool impressive uh great great work use of analytics uh and url um and yeah um yeah the comment back from uh Prabhat saying amazing thank you very much for clarifying around the um the sound key diagram um and a comment thank you from Santana. Uh, you know Sankey can be difficult to explain to users at times so yes yeah <laughs> and a comment and a comment from Steve saying they're glad you didn't have to follow that <laughs> <laughs> fantastic um has anyone else uh before we um before we go to our last presentation does anyone else have any comments they want to to shout out or questions for for Matthew so we ended up with two data sets. That's what we ended up with um, total, bringing them all together. And yeah, I think the, uh, hopefully, depending on your level, you took a little bit of something away from that. Um, didn't, didn't go through it in the same way as Steve, but it's really interesting to see what everyone's doing with this stuff. Mm -hmm. And also interesting to see people's different styles as well. I mean, blue text on orange is my the way I'm going forward now. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, just one more question coming in. So uh, from from Gert. Um you were using Dataflow to transform the data. Um, I wonder if it would have been easier with the new coming data prep UI. I think everything is going to be easier with the data prep UI. I mean, there's going to be some of the things for me are going to be like. Um, Firstly, the fact you can preview it. I'm going to say it took me a couple of iterations to see what was happening when I did a lot of that in Excel because I didn't want to do all those individually. Um, there's going to be a preview like panel in the bottom, of the data prep UI from what I saw. Um, and that's going to help just massively. The whole experience is going to be beautiful. Yeah. yeah it's, yeah. it's only in beta at the moment. Is that right? The data prep UI or pilot or one or the other? It's uh, coming as a beta in the summer, so in a couple of weeks, uh, you should all have it in production if you enable in, in analytic settings, um, but not quite general available yet. Um, James, uh, are, are you um, are you yep. fully prepared, ready to go? Yeah, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you well. Okay, and, great. Um, so let me know when you want to begin and I shall start the 15 minute timer. Yep, let's do it. So hi everyone, uh, my name is James Wignall. I'm based in Cheltenham in the Southwest. Um, I'm a, a lead developer and product owner for the analytics card at an aviation company. And I've been using the uh, uh, Einstein analytics since about 2015, back when it was called WAVE. So I have to train myself to get out of using that terminology because I, I know it's uh, Einstein analytics now. So. Uh, yeah, just like uh, the, the other folks did, I started off by taking those seven different disparate data sets and threw them into the data manager to see what we could come up with. And I used a um, simple lookups just to see what the trends were and tried to mash them all together. And I ended up two with the two different data sets and that set what is what set me off and gave me the inspiration for these two dashboards that I've come up with today. So uh, the first one is uh, kind of been used by the persona of a shield agent. So they're the kind of secret agent um, team in the Marvel Universe. Uh, and this is basically taking a look at the um, Avengers films and, and, and the Avengers initiative to see how um, each of those, um, how the teams change from film to film, um, all using the power of analytics. So what I've got here is several different cards. What you can do is just click on the little icon and it will give you some KPIs of how 
the uh, various different teams in terms of heroes and villains are broken out um, and how they change. Uh, I've got these nice little indicators right here, which are custom, and the color of those will change to either red or green to say it was a positive or a negative change each time. Um, I also used a um, quick uh, custom welcome message as well, so it can uh, uh, it can welcome the person personally to, uh, based on who's logged in. So, you know, if Ricky was to log in, it would say, welcome back, Ricky, instead. It's kind of a nice little touch uh, just to make it uh, friendly. So below uh, what we've got is a dynamic chart. Oh, and by the way, each of these different uh, views that I'm going through is all using the pages functionality. I'm a huge fan of pages and you can do some really nice uh, navigation um, hacks as well to, to, to create this. So this is all powered using uh, pages and link widgets. Um, so what we got below is a breakdown of the whole roster of characters that were in that um, film. You can control um, each of the different elements of that using the controls at the top. So what you can do is you can add in some of the other attributes, just add those in. You can change the sorting, for example. So if there's some people like this rocket raccoon here, who's unfortunately red in all the categories, potentially he's someone that we might want to uh, submit for some uh, retraining to try and get him back on uh, to the level of some of the other MVPs that we have here. Um, I also used uh, conditional formatting to try and highlight and bucketize the data. So breaks it down in terms of red, yellow, green, just to give you a kind of gauge of, you know, what what do these numbers mean? What does it mean in context? Um, I also used chart markers to kind of call out that the um, important parts of the uh, data, you know, if it's some particular trends and th this one here, I thought was most interesting as well, because this is when the uh, most powerful villain in the data set was introduced, who was Thanos, which you, if you guys are familiar with the films. I'm sure you're uh, familiar with his work. Um, if you want to drill down and get really into the data, what you can do is you can see all of the KPIs broken out in terms of the heroes section, which is at the bottom, and then the villains, and you can see how they compare just very quickly by comparing these numbers. So a team of 16 uh, heroes is going up against a, a, a team of five villains, which is crazy. Um, and even that, if you guys have watched the films, no, it, it didn't go that well. Um, what you could do here, you've got the same, um, instead of just the total, you can see what the different characters um, strengths and weaknesses are just on one page. Um, and also what you can do here is you can just pick uh, two of these characters to see how they might compare. So what I'm going to do is take the most powerful uh, villain, which is Thanos, and the most powerful hero, which is Thor. So I'll select him. Thor 2. And you can see if it came to a one-on-one -on -one battle, it's pretty close. They're looking pretty uh, close across the board, really. But it looks like Thor uh, can take him in terms of speed. So that's that's good to know. Um, I also chose to use the uh, action framework here. Um, I actually configured this using the uh, XMD functionality. So what it does is it uh, passes uh, the character's name into the uh, into a search URL that's on the Marvel Cinematic Universe Wiki, and you can go and look up some of the interesting stats about him. And uh, you see this picture, you remember who he is. 10 minutes, James. Yep, no problem. So um, this also got me thinking about what if I wanted to recruit a team that wasn't just based on the movies? Because as um, everyone's been showing here, there's a whole host of uh, content from all the comics, and that was all in the data set as well. So what we've got here is uh, a view um, to allow you to show some of the bit um, to try and find the team members that could be useful for your next mission. So the first one I'll start off with is this top five, uh, top 50 leaderboard, which shows um, the, the characters or the character groups um, who have been in the most amount of comics. So what you can do is you can see I've, I've got the same uh, visuals here using the images. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the trailheads, you might have seen the custom map tutorial. This is done in, in the exact same way, uh, where you append a URL to the image, which is stored on your Salesforce instance, and it's able to just render it um, automatically. And you can do that on several different charts, like the bar charts, polar gauge, and uh, some of the other ones out there as well. So what you can do here is kind of cool. Um, you can click 
on a particular character. Uh, the table on the right hand side will filter down so you can see all the different comics. You can see them in the most recent one uh, to the oldest one sorted there. And uh, you can see a description of it to say that to find one that you might be interested in reading. So say that I was interested in reading again, I, I love making it um, actionable. What you can do is go and look up that comic and I found that you could find it on Amazon for 159, which isn't a, isn't a bad deal actually. So jumping back uh, again, if I go back to my navigation and, and this, by the way, again, is pages and uh, transparent link widgets. And that's just what um, is nicely navigate uh, animated together um, automatically by analytics. The next one is a kind of character breakdown and really diving into those um, uh, uh, attributes that they might have. So what we've got is just a list um, sorted by the total points value. Uh, and you can kind of see that Jean, Jean Grey here at the top is super powerful, followed shortly after by uh, Stardust. But say in this instance, I was interested in finding a hero for my mission that had to have a specific set of attributes. So say I was interested in someone that had uh, anti-gravity power, perhaps I'm going into space. Uh, we could find our good friend Kang here. Uh, and you can see he is green in uh, three of the different sections in orange in two of them. Or, oh, say, yep, or uh, say I was interested in someone that has echolocation, perhaps they're going caving or something like that. Uh, you can find our good friend Daredevil who isn't quite as good, but he still has some strengths and he is uh, apparently the only character in the data set who has that ability, which is interesting. So what you can do is I have this uh, hidden filter widget, uh, filter panel here, and you, you'll you notice that the filters change automatically based on the selections. And again, this is just done by images, containers, and uh, link widgets, which is pretty cool. Uh, this section is is kind of like fancy football. You, you, you might want to um, say that you're trying to pull this new team together, or perhaps you're going to uh, fight a specific villain, and you know um, that, that you have to defeat them, and that's why you need this new team. Uh, and that's why we've come up with this, which is a kind of head-to-head -head view. So what you can do is take someone like Jean Grey, who, if you remember, was the highest on the last view, and then uh, Stardust. You can see that as we flick over the different attributes and it changes the charts automatically using uh, selection bindings, um, you can see that she is absolutely dominant. So if we know that we're going against Jean Grey, we need to find someone to uh, bring into our team and to recruit. So what we can do is go to this view. So say that we need someone that could take out Jean Grey. I've got this view here, which sorts them. You can choose to show the ascending, descending, or you can deselect to just show it in alphabetical order. But let's let's keep it understanding for now. And I've set this um, reference line here at 90 points because that's nine out of 10, that's pretty strong. And you'll find very quickly across the board that Unfortunately, Gene is the MVP. And again, I've used those chart markers to, to, to call it out there. So she is very powerful. So I think we're going to need to recruit someone who's super strong. And it looks like the next one in line is Apocalypse, which is, is someone that I've actually not heard of. Um, but again, we could go look them up. Um, this time in a different one, uh, we could go find them in here. Get the, one, the back one. intel. Um, so what we can do here is we can add our new friend who is Apocalypse. And we can see how they stack up and do that uh, superhero top trumps, which uh, Will was talking about earlier. So you can see now when it's a uh, kind of two people on, on one, it, it kind of levels the playing field. So in terms of intelligence, she's got it. Um, we start to pull ahead in terms of strength, uh, speed very close, a bit more durable bit more powerful and that means that it's pretty darn close when you bring it all together uh, and it makes a much fairer fight and if we want to uh, definitely secure the win on this mission um, what we can do is recruit even more folks just by uh, siphoning through the different views that I showed there. So um, try to use uh, as many different um, uh, options out of the box that I could. Analytics has a ton of uh, functionality that you can do um, using Declaratively, you know, clicks, not code, which is great. I did use uh, my favorite things here, which is kind of selection bindings and result bindings quite often, um, but all of those were done using the interaction 
editor, you don't have to jump into the JSON code if you don't want to. Um, if I was to give you guys some uh, quick tips for, for designing your dashboards and trying to make them look really beautiful, I would suggest that you go into this menu here, which is if you hit edit and go to the cog, you can see some uh, controls here, which I, I find really useful and gives me a lot of control. So what I like to do is set the columns to as max as I can, which is about 49, set the uh, row height to fine and the spacing to zero, so you have pixel precision. And I also like to set a default uh, width so we can make sure that the resolution is the same and it guarantees the, the, the view no matter what uh, device person's looking at it, whether it's a big widescreen television or perhaps it's just on their laptop or their phone, which is cool. Um, I also have to give credit where credit's due. I was heavily inspired by the WOW demo, which the, the Salesforce user experience team put on, and, and you guys might have caught this at Dreamforce one year. It's great, um, and there's a recording out there that you guys can go watch on Vimeo, um, and you can also get access to a bunch of different um, examples, which will give you some really cool inspiration to, to design your own chat, charts like this. Um, again, it's all done using pages, uh, navigation widgets, uh, containers, and images. So I think that's uh, everything I had. So go, go ahead, get stuck in, and uh, I'd love to see you guys try and replicate this challenge on your own, and see what you can come up with. Fantastic, James. Uh, you're a good two minutes inside. Uh, good two minutes inside, but no, brilliant. Thank you very much. I think that was, uh, you know, that was really, really interesting. Um, just looking at some of the comments that have come into the chat. Um, you know, you have been very, very positive. Um, yeah, looks like someone's been using dashboard templates like it from a <laughs> certain Ricky Hofgaard. Um, uh, a great comment here from Jay saying, well, I'm very new to uh, Iceland Analytics, um, you know, I'm from the US, but the first time here. So again, Jay, thank you very much for joining us for the first time. Uh, and Jay, now Jade knows, uh, tells us that she knows where all the superheroes like to hang out. <laughs> Um, there was a question, and this might not be for you, James, it's probably more a question for uh, Ricky or Skip, if they're on the call, but um, you know, you've used Pages, um, so Pages makes ISO Analytics really stand out. Uh, any plans of increasing the limits over 20? Not to my knowledge, um, 20 is quite a lot. So I'm not quite sure if this is something that is on the roadmap. I haven't heard anything anyway. We, we've hit 20 here as well, um, before we knew there was a limit. Um, Skip here, I don't, I don't know, if, I didn't even know there was a limit of 20. So we can uh, find out from other product teams if there's any that increase that. I you guys filed any kind of bug or something like that that way that at least it's in the system um that you'd like it increased that, that might be the quickest way to get some attention okay thank you thank you skip a question from from matthew um yeah really like the style of these dashboards is is it all is it are these all from salesforce templates uh, yes, yeah, so yeah, I think they are now. I, I think they're included as part of the design analytics uh, template, which you can create. I think that they do actually include that now, but the, the way that I did it was replicating it from the um, unmanaged package that I, that I mentioned before. But I, th I think you can go into the app um, creation window now, start from template, and I think this design style guide has a lot of these um, sort of ones in there as well. You can also use the, um, the template dashboard it has the ones that are smart are from the wow demo. Oh, very cool. Cool. Thank you. I didn't know there was templates, so uh, that was good. I didn't know there was design templates, sorry. So, good. And another question actually from you, Matt. Uh, could you go over how you did the images? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So the, there is a trailhead that goes into this, but if I just find that uh, lens there, if I go look at the preview, oh, in fact, let me edit it. Uh, so what I did is I um, uploaded a separate CSV, which had all the different image URLs in it. it it's kind of, um, it, it's derived off of your URL. Um, it, it all goes through it in the template, but if you go look up uh, custom maps, uh, Einstein Analytics and Trailhead, it, it goes into this uh, method really great. 
but all, all, all you literally do is um, change, create a simple table, which is literally just the name by the count of rows. Um, I add in an additional short line of code, which basically says it just returns the first image URL, which is this column. And all you have to do once you've done that is you can click on your chart, you can scroll down, and it will say it's somewhere down here. I might have gone past it, but there, there's an option in here that you can just turn on uh, to display the values um, in the chart as pictures. Here we go. So it's under the Y axis in this case, you just click use icons. And then what you do is you just select uh, that column, which is, which is the custom one, which is the comic uh, image URL file. And it does it on here. So I think this is supported on a good handful of charts. Um, I, I personally love the, the polar gauges here. I feel it's really nice. Uh, and you can make these as big as you like as well to show more. Uh, you can just adjust the trellis to show that. Excellent. Excellent. Um, are there any more questions before we go, before we move on to? Can I ask another question if that's all right? I know yeah, I'm asking lots of absolutely. questions, but, but that's my personality, unfortunately. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> um, do you, I struggled to see, um, to do this, but can you use external URLs for the images? Or is it just... Yeah, just um, I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think you can do external. I actually tried to do the same. This took me quite a while until I realized that I could just upload yeah. all of these files um, into the actual app itself. Um, yeah. I actually I actually ran into the the limit that I could do in my uh, trailhead walk, but I think you guys did it in a, a fully fledged one, which is cool. Um, but yeah, if you if you literally go into here, all you have to do is just mass upload all the ones that you did. Uh, you'll see uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, the ones that I'm referencing. Um, and then all, all it does is it creates um, an ID. It's just based on the name that you upload it, and uh, then then it comes through just as part of that table. So I, I can dig out that trailhead for you, and I can post it in the chat in a moment. Yeah, I think I think I used the method, the a similar method for yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I think your way was a bit more clever than mine. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think they're very very similar. You, um, but yeah, I just want I wanted the external URLs, which it sounded like what you tried as well. Um, yeah. That was going to make things easier for the both of us, I think. <laughs> right. Right. Um, yeah. Well, I fine. believe it's a security thing, which is why you can't use the external URL as images. Cool, cool. Thank you. And uh, just want a bit of a shout here to Simone. Thank you for sharing the trailhead module. Um, just put it in the chat um, relating to the uh, to to what James was saying about how to put the images in. Yep, that's the one. Awesome. So, uh, for anyone who wants to uh, capture that, please, uh, you know, please note that's in the chat now. So, big thank you to, um, you know, big thank you from everyone here to uh, to the three of you. I think we all agree there's been three fantastic presentations. Um, so, um, without further ado, um, Ennis, would you like to let us know and put us out of our, you know, out of our suspense? I'm going to start a drum roll. Okay, drum yeah. roll. All right. So, and the winner of the challenge is Matt. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Well done, Matt. I, would you like to give us a, a, a speech of um, wisdom so, and I so, don't know. so I've done a couple demo competitions recently, um, and one of them I came uh, very low, um, and the the last one I wrote a poem to try and win, and that's why there was a poem that people are asking about, and I still didn't win. So it's really nice to know that. Um, a group that I, I've been, this is my, I think it's my third or fourth. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to have won this one. It's, uh, yeah, thanks guys. Um, and I have to say, well, for... I did enjoy seeing the other presentations as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, Steve does a great job of the discovery stuff. I've seen you do it before. 
um, and uh, J James was showing his stuff as well, and I thought that was beautiful. But um, <laughs> that, that kind of, I didn't know templates were a thing as well. So. No, fantastic, Matt. No, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the, yeah, to Matt, to Steve, and to James for you know taking time out out of their day and out of their weekends and out of their you know. Um, out of their lives to you know to play around with the data set for our you know for our entertainment for our learning and um, yeah really hope um, everyone enjoyed uh, enjoyed the session this evening. Yeah.